Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. In this video, me, my dad and my partner Jess went on a tour of France. They had a amazing kind of flea market, which was 206, I don't know how to do that, 200 plus kilometers long. Two and a half million people supposedly went to this flea market. And I've never seen anything like it in my life. If you imagine your own city, the local centre of your own city and every shop has a store outside and they're selling off everything for cheap, 50% uh, off, 60% off, that sort of stuff. There was loads and loads of cool antique shops, um, not antique shops, antique stalls, selling lots of great stuff. We went looking for toys, toys are our thing, as you know, I really wanted to find something action money and, well, I kind of did. At the first store I came across, I found... Um, Actually, my dad found it. There was a guy selling that box of Action Man. And when I got there, I ran as fast as I could. They were quite expensive. They were £60 or €60 Euros each, which is about £52 or something each. You got a bit of a uniform. There's nothing special in there. There was no Space Explorer. There's no judo outfit. And a lot of it was actually the French version of Action Man. So there were some uniforms which were a bit different than our own ones. Um, but they were nothing special. The prices were too high to make any kind of profit on it or to go into my own collection, or to trade with somebody, or to go to somebody I know. It just wasn't worth it. Now, I could have bought a whole, maybe bought a whole lot of it in one go, I spent all my money, but I didn't want to risk it, because I wanted to make sure I had money to go around the actual thousands and thousands of other stalls. But what I did buy from this chap was these. These are action stars they're little action figures which I'll show you in a second they're made by Airfix um, I think in the UK and other parts of Europe they were called Eagle Salt Eagle Stars or something or Airfix Eagle figures but I got six of them in all two police officers a really cool cable one I've never seen before And then another UN soldier, and then a medic. Now I'll show you what they look like. Um, everyone I looked at so far, the boxes are some of the boxes are okay, but every single figure so far has been. I've only looked in three or four, but it's been sealed. Um, they are very like Fisher Price figures, but they're very cheaply made. They've, they got the their bodies are really soft, which I don't know why. They made it like this, it's like a weird rubber, but it's not a perishable rubber like you get with other toy lines. These came out, I think, in 1976. And what's cool is all the accessories are still in the original baggies. Now these could be potentially be stapled from some kind of reseller who just put them in a bag again. But the fact they're all in there complete. Original condition, nothing looks scratched or anything, and they've even got the original elastic on the bags. Make me think and believe that these are actual original sealed bags, the way they were being sealed in the factory. Very cheap, but that was what the 70s was like for some stuff. And this is a very cheap toy line, you can tell. But what's cool is it comes with this little um, brochure. Very Action Man like, guys, you would know it's very much like an Action Man um, type of toy. Action Man have one of those as well. I think they just copied copied the Action Man basically when they did it in miniature. Kind of like a um prototype version of like Action Force really. They're very kind of crude in their way, but they look they look cool at the same time. Now I know they did many variations of these. I know there's a diver in black as well as orange. I've seen the medic a few times to be honest. But these these basically are um, not too expensive. You can probably pick them up about twenty-five to thirty pounds each. Some of them, but um, that's kind of the kind of price I'm probably going to try and price these up at. Because I kind of I don't think these are going to stay in my collection. I've got no room really. But um, I'm probably going to try and at least sell one or, sell one or two of them. They're really cool. Very seventies, aren't they? But well, that was really cool to buy those. I probably got, I paid a price which I thought was good. Um, it it meant that there's profit there for me, but it also meant that um, 
I know these can be quite tricky to sell. They're not, they're not the most easiest thing to, to sell. Some people just don't remember them. A lot of people don't remember them, to be honest. I think it was a short toy line made by Airfix. Maybe had one kind of like series of figures. And then he just didn't make any more. Probably somebody out there who collects these and knows everything about them. So our journey was really cool, guys. We went to, um, so I was going to France. We went to Bruges in Belgium and looked around there and I found some other bits and bobs which I'll show you in a minute but yeah those are the best ones best um thing I found kind of in the morning really and then I went to another store and the guy was selling loads of toy soldiers Tim Poe and stuff and I made a little bit of a mistake and at the same time I did got a good bargain to be honest I'll tell you I'll show you what I got now so the guy had action figures on his shop on the store and I noticed he had a few um Powder Force 1995 Star Wars stuff, and I was like, no, not interested in that at all. And then I found this on top of the Toy Soldiers. This is a, I can get the light on it a bit better. This is a Action Force figure. It, I think it's from Series 1. It's a very early Action Force, very English Action Force, if you will. Um, I don't know if it's marked or anything, which to say if it's like a French version, like a Meccano version, or I don't know. I'm not a big Action Force collector, guys, so that we know much of action for us but i saw this and thought oh that's cool that's great um so I put my, and the guys passed me a tray and make a make a pile so i made a pile so i got that one plus then i found this one um is it red shadow or red baron one of the two he's in really nice condition i had this one as a kid i didn't know much about him i thought he was like a weird german so i just played with him in my star wars toys but um yeah very nice condition a few bits of scuffs so i would say he's probably about an eight or a nine out of ten it's not 10 out of 10, but it's definitely not a poor quality one. You look good on anybody's shelf. And then this is the bit where I made a mistake. There was a few of these type figures. So there's this chap here. And I was looking through these figures. I noticed some of them were Lanard, Lan, Lanards or Lancorps or something. A kind of uh, off-brand, I want to say copy of G.I. Uh, it's a copy of G.I. Joe, to be honest. It's made, made in exactly the same way. Same type of figures, same type of like imagery. And I was like, okay, these are not worth much at all. And I was going to put, put them back. I should have bought them really because they're quite fun. I kind of liked them as a kid because they were cheap. Because we never got really much of Geo Joe in, in the UK. Um, but then I noticed it said Hasbro on his leg. And I was like, okay, if it says Hasbro on his leg, that means he's a G.I. Joe. Or most likely some kind of G.I. Joe related figure. He's an official figure. So I added him to the collection. And then as I was going through, I noticed there was a the blue chap, who I think is the bad guys of G.I. Joe. And... I kind of get, got confused and thought he might have been an Anard figure, Land's Court figure, whatever they're called. And I put him back, and I think he might be a good figure, actually. I think he might be worth something quite a lot. I put him back. Why? I do not know. Um, and then I picked up this Princess Leia, and she's really nice. She's a bit dirty, but she's not scuffed or anything, and the, and the chipping's okay. And her face is quite nice. Usually they're quite poor, these faces. They can, they can scuff. She's really good. Um, and guys, they those figures there was five euro, so it's just, just over a pound each. Um, a pound each. I think he used to go for quite a lot during lockdown. Um, he was going for quite a bit of money with the toys, uh, right? Rose in price, but yeah, he's so cool. I like him a lot. I don't know what to do. I've got a bit of a, I've got a, a action force box and building up every time I go out to a toy fair car boot sell i generally find action force they, 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 they always i say i always find an action force figure for cheap they're usually in the bottom boxes for a pound or something so i'm building up a little box of them i might just do a job lot of them I might take them to an auction house i don't know same with star wars i do not same with star wars as well oh, i did very basic research i think this guy's called thrasher and i think he comes with a vehicle so yeah pretty cool maybe like a motorbike or something I think this is from like 1986, I believe. But these figures, I I thought they were worth lots of money at um, GI Joe because in America people collect them and go mad for them. But some are worth like maybe five or six pounds, and then some of them are worth like a thousand pound plus. But I think he's in the five six five to six pound sort of area. But still, that pays for that there. So I think that's a pretty cool, pretty cool find. I'm happy with that. Uh, the next up, I just went a bit crazy because I wanted to buy some antiquey. 
and I bought this cool enamel sign. Um, this was like £15. It needs a clean. See all this white speck stuff here? Um, this is actually lime scale and I know how to clean that up so I will be cleaning it up probably tomorrow. It's nice and sunny so that would be quite good to do as a job. I can get it cleaned up and it will look shining within half an hour and get that looking really good. But yeah, you can tell it's a bit over A4 size. It's quite heavy because it's proper enamel. It's basically a construction iron ironworks, I think it says, or sign. So yeah, nothing special, but for £15, I could probably triple my money on that sign quite easily. And when you're in France and you're looking at antique stalls, you want to look for cool signs. I mean, vintage signs to me are really cool. If I had the money and if I had, most importantly, if I had the space, vintage signs is probably one of the things I would def definitely, definitely collect. Great for a man cave, isn't it? And as I said, the actual antique shop, um, antique stalls were, it was a bit strange. You get one road, which will have a hundred antique stalls on it. And then you get a next road and it'd be like, like a car boot store in the UK. Everybody was set up with it, selling their toys and selling their bits and bobs. Most of it, like 90% of the toys I did find were the kind of modern Marvel and DC uh, superhero and Star Wars toys that are very action figures with no limited amount of joints. They break quite easily. They're very cheap to make, <coughs> they sell cheaply, and you can get them at every car boot sale. You know what I mean, the long, big, 12-inch kind of Action Man style ones. They were everywhere, and every store I saw had Tintin books. Thousands and thousands of Tintin books. Like, if you can, they, France has a really cool comic book industry, like independent comic book industry. There's really cool characters, and Tintin, well, Tintin's Belgium, isn't he, but... That's is that sort of area really, um, and really cool. But I kept thinking, how are you going to sell these? Because every store has one for sale. So like, if, if you're selling it for two euro, maybe every store has one for two euro. You're not going to make any money. But anyway, I saw these cool students. They were about you know like probably like mid mid twenties maybe, and they had some cool toys out in the store. And I found this box. And my knowledge of these toys are I had these as kids. I know they can go for over a pound. Some can go for five pounds. I know that one or two can go for like 20, 30, 40 pound each. I paid 15 euro for this whole box, which opens this way. And it's filled with Pokemon figures. These are made by Tomy and they all came out in the early 90s. So you have like Gyarados there. Some are already like good quality. This one, if it was in, this one's in poor quality. So it's chipped there. It's chipped down his tail on his ear. Because he's invisible, like all not visible, see through, transparent is the word I'm looking for. That could go for like 30, 40 pounds or something, but unfortunately it's in too poor condition. But there's loads of figures in there, guys. It's all like the first generation, like, but they're all missing, like, he's missing his ears. I think he's in quite good condition. Psyduck. My, 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 I love Pidgey, such a boring but cool Pokemon at the same time. A Butterfree missing its antennae. This is a Flareon. Then we have Pikachu, but unfortunately he's been chewed to bits by somebody. I, I used to love chewing toys as a kid. A Kadabra, I think it is, or Alagazam. Uh, a reasonably nice Pikachu, just needs a bit of a clean. And I'm not going to go for everything because this, this is silly, but rats and water tools and poly rafts. This is all £15. Now my idea is basically to um, take some of this to a toy show and sell these at like £2 each. Or I might just job block them on eBay because some of them are in poor quality and just be like, there's the good ones, there's the bad ones. And try and get double my money basically. What's great is, is cause it's like 15, it's actually 15 euro, not 15 pounds. In my head, I kept thinking of it as pounds. It means that when I take off my profits and tax and everything, you could actually make a little bit more money because you kind of forgot about the conversion. So this is about 12, they're about 12 pounds altogether. So I think it's not bad, especially considering it's like the evolutions as well. But anyway, if you're not into Pokemon, I'm not going to bore you any longer with that. Um, I think that's a great little buy. It just needs a bit of a clean, a bit of a wash. And they'll be up on eBay or up at a toy show somewhere. But apart from that, guys, it was actually pretty poor for toys. My dad came with money to spend and found pretty much nothing. He, um, we, we were hoping to find, in my head, I was hoping to find toy, toy stands with, like, 
vintage toy die cast dinkies and corgis and um mechanos and toys and that sort of stuff but it's just does it's just not there and um there was a cool store selling model kits but they were just priced like 20 percent off and it was like well most stores have cheap model kits for so anyway so yeah it was a it was a bit disappointing if you're going to go by toy hunting it was disappointing i also was looking for training cards i was looking for like pokemon and there's pokemon in every single stand but they were like kids pokemon cards but they were in poor condition and they wanted too much money for them i was also looking for like sports cards i love collecting football cards right now guys that's my thing and football cards and football stickers i found none um and so i just didn't bother with it uh, it was just a bit annoying really i kind of i was hoping for more and there was like there's nothing there the last store we came to as we were walking back to the train station i did spot it and dad picked it up it was the moonraker fx model set from 1970 where we go 79 um great set the guy wanted 30 euros for it which is about 25 quid that's quite it's usually about a 40 pound set 45 pound set so 25 euros you're kind of making a bit of profit there and it looks good on the stand so that picked that up but apart from that it was a bit disappointing the antiques we look at we were looking at were great there's loads of really cool stuff not many stuff that i'm interested in but there's lots of cameras lots of vinyl record stands which i really love there was lots of really cool furniture but we just can't bring it back because it's too big but we did go to bruges uh, which is in belgium the next day and they got a lovely little um it's a lovely town amazing beautiful little town and they, I can know it's like an old town. They all have, also have loads of like little stalls selling antiques and books and that sort of stuff. And I came across these training cars. This lady had a box full of them. And I, I didn't have much time, so I was running through them quite quickly. I was pulling out people, and, I, and they were all from like the 50s and 60s. And I had to try and guess who they all were. But the ones I recognised, I pulled out, and she wanted a euro piece. But I collect training cards, so these are from probably from 1962, 63. We have Bridget Bordeaux, and it's, I think, in Dutch. I'm not really sure of the uh, manufacturer. Then we have an Elvis Presley. Early Elvis Presley cards are always can be worth quite a bit. Um, it's probably only worth maybe £10 in this card, but still, for, for a euro to £10, it's not bad. Doris Day. Cool modern Brando card. And finally, an Elvis Presley card, and they're all... Thank back to those last ones. So that was it for my um, my buying. I wish I could have bought more. I was hoping to buy more, but in some ways, what I did buy was actually a bit of a blessing because I can make profit here. Those could be probably my personal collection. The Pokemon figures, I'm gonna make profit on. I know I am. It's just a case of waiting for that then to sell. And, um, and those action star sets, um, I think people. Are, and there's a few people that really collect those, so it's going to be interesting trying to um, see if I can sell a few to those people. If not, they're going to be up on eBay soon. And I might take them to a toy show or something. I just want to get rid of them so I can just reinvest into my personal collection, to be honest. So guys and girls, thank you very much for watching. Please um, hit the like and subscribe button for more videos. There's always going to be more videos, guys. I'm hoping to do a couple more videos up, up towards Christmas time. Um, looking at old crystal, like old toys and stuff like that. Really looking at like our favourite toys from when we were kids. So please, yeah, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. What's your favourite toy I found? Most importantly, guys, stay safe and happy hunting.